Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. <laughs> Sayyidi, what is the Tariqa method understanding of overcoming addictions, compulsive behavior, and lower desires? Forgive me if the question is too far away from the current class topics. No, it's okay, alhamdulillah. What was the question? <laughs> What is the Tariqa method understanding of overcoming addictions, compulsive behavior, and lower desires? Yeah, the, the, the counting, I think this was the, the talk for it. This talk tonight is, is a general talk for everything. So all the questions are, are relevant in character and meditation and, and understanding is that we take an accounting of ourselves. So that which is, is a compuls compulsive behavior is that we have to first identify that what, what are the situations, what, what are the characteristics, what, where, what's triggering a certain action. If we know certain things to be wrong and, and certain desires to be incorrect, we have talks on those because these are all energy based. So for now youth, inappropriate viewing of, of inappropriate things can become addictive and their fingers are away from computers and in a second they can go into very inappropriate areas. Those are very negative energies. So then the combating of negative energy and negative desires is then with their salawats, their keeping of wudu, make sure what's being eaten because the food that people are eating, what they're drinking is affecting their energy. So those whom, who eat out a lot or eat in different places, the food maybe is affecting somebody, then they have to make their wudu, they train on how to keep their wudu especially when touching these devices because of the negativity on these different devices. And then there's addiction of gaming and those become again, you know, the connection, making the connection, making your accounting, all of these is, are for people to keep a hisab for themselves. That's why we said when you train the children that, I want you to meditate today, I want you to learn how to meditate, I want you to make a connection, then I want you to identify on your notes that you have of Shaykh's talks that, you know, what are the, the different things that maybe you're doing that are incorrect and you spend too much time on the gaming. Now why is it incorrect? The bow because there's a lot of negativity, not a lot of shooting, a lot of uh, violence, a lot of uh, energies that are not uh, good for your heart and for your eyes. But what's the effect on you in these circumstances is that it's destroying your heart. It's, it's geared towards corrupting the eyes and corrupting the heart of the servant of Allah And it's psychologically playing into the people to make them feel that they have an authority, that uh, they have some sort of recognition and that's dangerous. That's why to combat the children whom when they're younger, when they get older and Shaykh said, my kid's 18 years old he's playing video games, what do I do? Well he's probably been playing for you know 12 years, what are you going to do at, at 19 years old? But when they're starting off young put them into sports. Why games lure people? Because they have… Uh, uh, character and social defects, right? So somebody whom has not been trained to be social means that they, they don't know how to communicate with people or interact with people or feel socially awkward because of school, because of conditions, whatever they are. Maybe the school is too aggressive, some areas are, are just too… too much of a minority and other kids are not associating. Whatever it is, what shaitan is playing with is that the person is not going into a social environment, so I'll give them a game and that will be their social environment. And in that game they feel safe and in that game they achieve ranks, so they feel recognition, they feel fame, they feel, they feel like they've achieved something. But we want to combat that. We don't want that child to live in a virtual world and they virtually communicate and they virtually feel secure. You want them to be secure in real life. So you send them to boxing, send them to karate, send them to soccer. Send them to a sport in which they're forced to be amongst people, forced to socialize 
and that they learn how to physically communicate with people, physically keep the company and the fellowship of people so that the game is more what it's supposed to be just a part-time or pastime of entertainment. So those children whom exercise a lot and they're involved in different activities, they play their gaming very minimal because they want to go out and, and do their physical activities. So all of these addictions that are coming they have a, a lure from shaitan and a purpose. And the, those children whom are, are not socially active, shaitan wants to lure them into this world and then recognize them and give them ranks and clout and whatever it is and, and as a result they become very safe and secure in that game and can be dangerous. There are, there are shows now on Netflix showing the danger of their gaming world and, and the things that these gaming people were doing and so alhamdulillah protect us and protect our families and our children and involve them in, in sports and activities. It's the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad in archery and, and, and uh, horseback riding, swimming, any type of activity that the children have an active role and, and, a, and a physical movement, not sitting behind a computer screen inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Should we be careful of writing down character flaws with dangers of manifestation with the power of the pen? Writing your character flaws is already in you, so what can manifest? So you want to, you want to write what your character flaw is, right? But you don't want to do journaling, it's different journaling. Right? Journaling, I don't like this, I don't like that, this is horrible, that was this. That's just what, that's just the, the utterances and like the, the passing of unnecessary mouth and brain thoughts. It's just utterances from your brain that shouldn't have been thought in your head and journaling is now you're manifesting them by writing them. And those whom their hand become sort of taken by shaitan they find that they're just complaining and they're always victorious on the complaint. So the narcissistic character, the narcissistic character is that you're a victim. Yeah, I, I don't think very many people journal how tariqah is that I have oppressed people, I'm a very jealous and angry person and these… <laughs> no, they, they journal that everybody at work is bothering me, bothering me, bothering me, I'm, I'm sort of… Uh, I'm the unrecognized good person, I'm the, you're the best person, you're the hero in your journal and the whole world is bad. So then you've, you've reinforced that bad characteristic and even shaitan is making you to manifest so that you put it to pen. And you made it to be like a hundred percent haqq for you and that's not true. So then this is the reverse of that, that you want to identify what your fault is. So then you write down the people, places I don't like, why I don't like them but now put your medicine in there. No, because I'm jealous, because I have enmity, I have a lot of anger, I have a lot of pride. And those are important to identify so that when you look at that list and you'll make it as a short list, you'll know that you have anger, you have anger, you have pride, you have enmity and jealousy. So you'll shorten your list and those will be the ones in which you're continuously making your zikr, your salawats and your sujood and salat and najat that, Ya Rabbi don't let me to die in this state of knowing that I'm like a hypocrite that I have all these characteristics and I'm trying to take a path of truth. And that's why we've talked before that, yes, hypocrisy is the first stage. Everyone has to recognize, La ila anta subhanika ni kuntu min al that uh, I am an oppressor to myself, glory be to Allah and that I'm an oppressor to myself. If you don't realize that and you haven't realized that then you really didn't enter the path. The path's entry is that, glory be to Allah and I am verily an oppressor to myself. So I have to understand how am I oppressing myself inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam. Oh, where all these questions mm. came from? Now there's more. <laughs> Was the inspirations of yeah. Zishan? <laughs> uh, Sayyidi, how to manage the polarity of a personality 
when we identify to have two different behaviors in personal life, more positive, good characteristics, versus professional life, where the characteristics tend to be bad? Yeah, we, uh, we talked before that most Naqshbandis are bipolar. So the psychologists or psychiatrists who may be watching, oh bipolar something, we're not talking that. We're talking that you're shifting in your polarity, that you're either happy or sad and you're going up and down too much. So Naqshbandiya and any spiritual path that its energy is true. Yes, there's going to be a, a tremendous flux and movement of energy. So this energy will take you to be very happy. So you're ecstatic, you're happy, you're, everything seems to be great, you feel the love of the Divine and then boom it drops down and the person becomes very depressed, anger, all the characteristics of life come into them identifying the state and then meditating so that the states are controlled. That when you're happy tell yourself, okay alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, don't let it go so high and begin to contain it. And then when the low comes remembering, eh, happy days are coming and the static, the love of Prophet is there so that you can bring the low up and bring your high down. And when you bring the high down and your lower bring it back up and you begin to keep controlling and that's when your heart begins to overtake your mind. Your mind is telling you, this is wrong, that's wrong, life is wrong and then your heart come back and say, no you're a lover of Prophet you should be rejoicing and then you make your salawats, do your practices, do your breathing so that you can bring these two polarities to a flat line. So in which you're not shooting up and you're not shooting down but you're consistent in your practices. Polarity of character then definitely you have to try to bring that quickly in line because we can't be good in the zikr and then be completely an opposite in, in dunya because of the hypocrisy and that hypocrisy has no reward. That's what makes us different than Wahhabis. Wahhabi and the Wahhabi sect are complete munafiqeen. They are the embodiment completely as if every word for word of hypocrisy is their movement. Their shaykh, their movement, their character, everything is of hypocrisy because they say what they don't do, they call people to what they don't do and they do everything the opposite of what they teach. That's the, the crazy. You, you, you see them, they have these, show these pictures of playing uh, blackjack and poker on, on, on holy places and <laughs> saying everything is forbidden. They have rave concerts in Riyadh and zikr is uh, forbidden. Yeah, so that, that's the embodiment and the symbol that Allah gives to us that don't be like that. You know, don't call people to harshness and toughness and you're not doing it. Call people to love, at least you're safer. You know that's why the shaykhs they don't teach harsh, they don't give the impression that we don't like you, we like them, don't, don't go jahannam, don't be kuffar. This shaykhs Naqshbandi are not supposed to talk like this. They have to be very, very soft, very, very loving so that Allah is not judging them otherwise you make it so hard, so difficult then uh, judge not for you shall be judged. You Allah will judge you to the criteria in which you are talking and dealing with people. That's a scary place to be because then Allah is looking at everything you did and do. That you said like that but why are you doing like that? And that's, that's not a relationship that anyone wants with Allah Prophet was continuously repeating to Sayyidina Aisha salam that, don't let Allah judge you, don't ask for Allah's judgment. Nobody survives that. We're asking for Allah's rahmah and forgiveness. So it means what? Then we go the way of khair and love and ishq. The ya Rabbi, I taught them about love, I taught them about your forgiveness. I tried my best to, to encourage people towards ishq and love and forgive. Where we did wrong Ya Rabbi forgive us, inspire us towards goodness. 
as a result of the good character then we become safe from that type of judgment in which Allah is, is, becomes angered. But when you go out and teach people about love and about good character and about hope then alhamdulillah that's the way to, to meet Allah in the state of love and ishq and hope and that the way that you taught people I'm going to judge you in that way. That I'm going to judge you with Divine love and Rahmah and mercy inshaAllah. And that's why the good character, you want to have good character at work, a good example and not, not to, to be from the oceans of hypocrisy and soft at work, soft with people, good spoken, clearly spoken an ambassador of the way. That's why the sunnah is not a fashion statement. The sunnah is an armor against shaitan, means shave your head and put your head on and grow your beard. You're less likely to be acting inappropriate at your office, right? Put your hair short, don't make it to be long and wild, put your hat on, grow your beard so people know that, oh you're a Muslim. And you don't want to be identified as a bad Muslim that, oh he was very loving, he was very kind and fragrant, he was always smiling. The sunnah is not something you hide and you use it for fashion enlightenment but as sunnah was our safeguard and our weapon against shaitan so that I look myself and so that I, ab I adhere to that reality to the best of my ability and also reminding myself when I'm out that I'm in the sunnah of Prophet and to be kind and be just but also we go out and some people are not kind and not just because they just don't like that look, they don't like the energy but that's okay Allah deals with them and we're not people that, that be pushed over. But the sunnah has its, its majestic reality and it's important as a protection for myself, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it okay to take other teachings that are not spiritually based, for example, for just basic acts of worship? Yeah, just study the books of fiqh, they're all spiritual based. So any of the imams or the madhab that you're following, you have to take their books, Riyai Salihin, for those whom are following Imam Shafi'i and you follow your madhab on, on the fiqh of how to wash, how to pray, how to do your qunut, how, oh, the how, all the how-tos, no problem if, if that's what the question is. The, the, the usul and the Islamic jurisprudence has to be studied and those whom study it then alhamdulillah. Not everything has to be spiritual but you don't want to mix spiritual books. That's when you have a problem. So we were visiting people and for the longest time they're having problems. And I don't understand what you're having problems, oh I'm becoming sick, oh I'm getting possessed. So you have our ta'weez, yeah. You're doing the wudu, yeah. You, you do the shaykhs, yeah. oh yeah all of them. I do all these askar, I do all these zikrs, I do all these things. Well two years of telling me they're doing everything until one day they say, you know what, uh, I forgot to tell you, I do reiki. What? Reiki? It's like a Japanese and Asian uh, stuff with different jinns and different beliefs and, and, and pagan understandings. You can't, you can't mix anything with the beauty and magnificence of Islam, nothing is accepted to be mixed with that reality. And if you do mix that you become schizophrenic because the energy is so pure that when you begin to mix these different realities you're summonsing, everything is a summonsing, everything is a, is a calling. When, when you do something Islamic you're asking from all the mu'man beings, all the spiritual beings, all the spiritual souls that they come to be present with you. That's why we said even before, Salaamu Alaikum Ayyuhan Nabi wa Salaamu Alaikum Ibadullahi Salihin. Who are the Ibadullahi Salihin? From Budal, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Wa Akhyar, Wa Jinni Wa Malaika. They're all Ibadullahi Salihin. You're giving them salams means they're all around you. So it means that energy is all around you. Everything you do is them, that's the group that you're rolling with. 
why would you invite other people? You have this whole holy group all around you and then you call hell's angels in and say, come hang out with us. Like, what? There's going to be a fight. All your spiritual beings are going to fight these devils because they don't understand why they're coming into this room and this to this association. It's a very holy association and those other things are very unholy but people just don't understand it, they don't see it. But then the result is immense clashes, clashes they're all fighting. Every time you're asking for madad and doing this one and that one they're fighting, everything is fighting and that's when the person becomes sick, they become attacked, they become under difficulty. And that's what didn't make sense that, how are you doing all these things of ours and you're still having these difficulties and they weren't being truthful for what else they were doing. That's why it never mixed anything with these Islamic teachings because it's going to be all sorts of schizophrenia, all sorts of difficulties because it's a different energy, different beings and none of them sort of compatible with Islam. Nothing is compatible with Islam. Islam is, is unique and by itself it's heavenly and pure. As a result the angels that safeguard Islam and all the mu'min souls that safeguard that reality, they Allah gives the truth and falsehood, they don't come together, they don't hang out with each other, they have nothing to do with each other and they actually will begin to sort of conflict and have immense amounts of difficulty. So much so that when somebody's strong in their belief and has this type of energy, when they walk into bad places, if we could see, we would see a huge amount of energy and all the negative creatures in that place, everything starts to go upside down. Everything starts to smash and break and all sorts of things because the energy of a mu'min person and pious person is an immense amount of energy, a lot of spiritual beings accompanying them. As they're coming into an environment, they're attacking everything to crush everything because the truth and falsehood they're not the same. And the power of the truth is so immense that Allah has no shortage of voltage. When they come into an environment they completely begin to destroy all negativity. Then things break and fall and, and, and that's their cleansing. So you can't call also the bad and that's why we don't mix anything with this, this great gift that Allah has given and the immense uh, light and love of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. As Salaamu Alaykum. Sayyidi, what is the proper way to ask for the shaykh to be present during the prayers? Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. It's the madad, it's the whole, the whole concept of the madad if you read the articles and the book and Everything is to make your madad and it becomes a second nature that you're always asking for support and madad and uh, Abu Qulaji said, Da'if or miskeen, I'm nothing. When you admit to your nothingness you see yourself being down, going down and that I'm nothing and that Ya Rabbi send me my support and send support to me. When Allah said, Ya Qulun ma sadiqeen, Ba'udhu Billahi min Shaitan Adhi Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qulun ma sadiqeen, keep the company of truthful servants. The first rule Allah doesn't care for dunya. So this, this holy verse Ayatul Kareem, when, Allah, when we establish Allah is not caring for dunya, Allah's concern is that which is eternal, that what is eternal is the soul. So when Allah is describing, Qurma Sadiqeen, keep the company of truthful servants then it's not uh, for physicality. It's for your spirituality that you should be continuously in the presence of truthful servants and that you have to keep your spirituality to be continuously with them. When you're with them then you're learning how to connect and connect that I'm asking to be out, not to be present and I'm asking for your support and your dress to become present and dress me from your support. And that the shaykh is the imam, I'm non-existent and that I'm vanishing. And I see that the, the ruhaniyat and the dress of the shaykh is the one leading the prayer inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, is the malakut different 
or separate from the realm of the jinn? Malakut, the world of light, yes and no. That it's a dimension that's not seen. So the Malakut is a dimension in the world of light that is not seen. And the world of the jinn is also a realm that's not seen because their creation is from a smokeless fire or what we know as electricity, something similar to that understanding. So it's a symbol of an unseen but real malakut is the heavenly realm of light and angels and, and paradise and oceans of power. The jinn are of a nature that gives us an example of something unseen. Those that surrender to Allah and give their allegiance in tariqahs that they're bound by their bayat and their allegiance. Not that they believe because people in a mosque can believe and cause a lot of mischief. Just humans that, oh I saw him in a mosque but he stole from me, did like this, yeah anybody can enter the masjid. But those whom they are mu'min and mukhlas and they gave their allegiance in Allah then they receive their trust and their amanat and the reality of their identity from malakut, from the heavenly realm of the world of light, alam al-malakut. But different, similar and different inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to control invading thoughts that are so strong almost like you're possessed and have to control? Again, these are all related to the meditation. That the whole concept of teaching the meditation in last days is so that they bring an energy upon themselves, an energy greater than themselves. When they can't bring the energy upon themselves, then what happens? The negativity begins to approach them. What are then some of the obvious signs of negativity approaching somebody? Bad, bad energy, bad smells, bad desires because they may just approach to push their, their concern, the negative thoughts because they begin to cast the thought into the brain which is very easy because the brain is, is not uh, something that's uh, encrypted. The heart can be encrypted with the spiritual practices. So then they begin to send these desires, these thoughts and everything because they're coming too close. So then that's why then the meditation and the practices and many whom have uh, OCDs and they can't they can't make a choice, they can't make a decision that they go, they wash, they come back out. They say they didn't wash. All of these are because shaitan is playing with people, too close to the people and as a result they're continuously in this difficulty. And in the last days becomes much more apparent because they're trying to enter into the people. The reason for teaching tafakkur and contemplation because it's the last stage of tariqah. But because they're flipping the book backwards and starting from this because the last days and the immense amount of difficulties. And when Allah gave permission for them to do that means then the heavenly realm is coming with the support. So when they make their connection they're admitting that they're weak, they're asking for these satellites, the souls of the shaykhs are satellites to be present with them. Doesn't affect worshipness, everybody's still worshipping Allah only Allah nothing ever changes from worshipping Allah The change is in yourself so that you take yourself out of the picture, that you negate yourself of yourself, your nafs and bad character and ask for this satellite to be present with you and you begin to breathe and meditate, do your zikr, do your awrat, visualize the shaykh is in front of you at all times, you don't have to look for his face. You have to be humble, say, I'm no one to look at his face, I'm not at that level, I'm nothing, la ilaha anta subhanika ni kuntu minat dhalimeen and that his fires and his light, his energies are now shining onto me. That's why we talked last night. Right? So many people want to be a shaykh, 
so many people want to be world leaders and, and very big officials. But the shaykh is a very simple job. His, 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 his example is the sun and the moon, right? We are the moons, we're taking a path of these pious people and our job as a moon is to be bombarded. So you get rocks and rocks and difficulties, everything cast it upon the moon, upon the moon, upon the moon. And the moon is not looking left and looking right, he's asking just to be dressed by the light. Then the quality of the shaykh, because now everybody is a shaykh, we don't know who's the real shaykh, is the one whom is like a sun where his light is a beatific Divine light and that his light doesn't discriminate. It doesn't look to the room and say, I like you, I don't like you. I like you, I don't like you, oh I like you, I don't like you, it's the sunlight. And that's why Allah gave us this example of an eternal light that nourishes us, that provides a warmth for us, that brings out the beatific fragrance of flowers and creatures. You see them basking in the sun and then praising and thanking Allah It's a symbol that Allah gave to us, ishara. That if you ever find in life that you don't know what a guide is and what a guide is supposed to be, Allah gave the sun for us. And if you don't ever know who you are supposed to be, He gave the moon to us. So the moon is when I'm thinking, oh my life has been too tough and then Allah says, look at that moon, there's no highways, there's no roads, there's no buildings and it just looks like it's got a lot of dents. And as a result it perfectly is reflecting the sun. And for me then the guide is the sun, that he casts his light with love at whoever looks at him, he's dressing him with no distinction, just look at me. That's why Prophet described, just make one salawat upon me, Allah sends my light onto you. He's the sun of the entire created universes. That light and that beatific light is that we feel, we understand that beatific light dresses us and blesses us. And that's the characteristic that Allah wants for us to understand that this light it doesn't discriminate, it's love. Anyone facing that light with all of their sins, that's why in Burda Sharif says, maybe this is a sinner and somebody making guna looking at that light. Maybe that He'll send me a light equivalent to the amount of my sins. That's the beatific nature of the Burda Sharif. So of course if the sinner looks at that light, he's going to send enough light to purify the sinner. And the one who's an angel, he send a light to make the angel happy, means everybody will be cleaned by that light and by that beatific reality and beatific fragrance. So that's the example. As a result that when we meditate then why to feel that, oh the shaykh not going to look at me, the shaykh is merely a satellite of that beatific reality. And if his nafs doesn't get in the way and keep talking in a very harsh manner, people will be attracted to that light. So that's why then the shaykh's beatific character, soft character, he just has to be a mirror, he doesn't have to you know, warn people and hurt people and harm people and scare people, he just has to be nothing. And as a result his mirror is reflecting that sunlight towards people. And they sit, they meditate, they feel the warmth of that light, the love of that light and they ask from that light from the amount of their sins, send me more light so that I can be washed and cleansed and purified of all my wrong and all my bad and all my difficulties. And Allah's response that my mercy outdoes my wrath and that don't, don't despair from the mercy of Allah So these are all these realities in hadith and Qur'an, all of that is in this understanding. So when they meditate and make their tafakkur and contemplation, that's what they're achieving. And that's why Prophet described that one hour of this training of tafakkur is like 70 years of worship. Why? 
Well, if that light begin to dress you, it's not a dunya light. So what happens in that light? What's in sunlight? What type of energy is in sunlight? What realities are flowing in sunlight? And that's sunlight. Imagine the eternal light of Muhammadun Rasulullah What knowledges are coming? What beautific character is coming? Shahidan, Mubashiran wa Nadiran. Allah describes Prophet in Qur'an that is witness, okay this light of course is seeing you. You don't see him but he sees you and Mubashiran is continuously sending these beatific lights to the souls and as these lights are coming it takes away the bad and replaces it with good. So then imagine then the salawats and meditating, salawats and meditating, meditating while playing the salawats. Then you're in an ocean and you're entering now into the sun where it begins to burn everything away other than the flame of love that exists within the heart. That's why Sayyidina Jalaluddin Rumi was describing that you, those whom are attracted to this talk and this understanding, understand they're like a moth, they're very frail, they have nothing. But they know that they're attracted to an immense fire and shaitan whispers to them that don't go towards that fire, everything's going to be burned in your life. But their calling is so strong and the resolve is so pure that they don't care what is going to burn. They begin to enter into that love, enter into that relationship and move into that flame. And as a result they burn, they burn, they burn, everything other than the flame begins to burn away and what exists is an immense drop of fire of Divine love. And that moves into that flame and becomes one with that ocean of immense rahmah and immense ishq and immense love for Allah So alhamdulillah there's nothing to be lost, only to be gained. The fear on the outside, oh you're going to lose everything. But we've talked before, now how can you lose anything? You're entering into the most powerful flame in the created universe. What that flame can give of realities of, of everything. It all exists within that authority of that flame. So whatever shaitan fools people that, oh you'll lose everything, what? Lose everything. He wants you to go to him for power and for a job. Go to the flame, the one whom controls all, all the mulk of this dunya, all the mulk of, of malakut, all the authority of malakut is under that control and under the dominion, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Honourable Sayyidi. Walaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, kindly guide us how to react to the insulting and demeaning remarks towards our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It hurts a lot to witness all this. Madad ya Mahdi alayhi salam. Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult subject because they know that they can do many things and that doesn't affect a believer. But if they should go towards coming against Sayyidina Muhammad then they're going to have a, a very bad situation unleashed upon them. So if that's what they like then Allah will send them punishment. So these are the signs of the last days when the shaitans and those whom governed by shaitans they want so much to poke at this reality and they want to bring upon a, a destruction. So in time of Prophet they're asking that, oh okay if destruction is coming bring it, bring it, we'll bring tomorrow the destruction. The, the nafs of the people are so crazy and Allah said, why do they want to bring destruction like that? They, they, they just don't believe. And same situation that they, they know that this brings about a destruction upon them, their, their civilizations, this dunya, everything. And they push it and push it and push it onto a, a day that uh, will bring about a, a reaction that they never imagined. And that Allah unleash uh, immense wars upon this earth. So just until that time people make their salawats, turn away from what, what people are saying, don't listen to it and engage with that 
just make your istighfar, your salawats and, and turn your face from what these shaitans are trying to ignite. You know the, they want to bring a fight upon the street but this fight won't occur on a street. So that's just shaitan trying to get people to come out into his arena to, to do. When that fight begins it's a command from heavens and it won't be on the street. So that's not something that anyone has to worry about. So for now it's to ignore it, it's ignore what people are doing, turn away from what they're doing and Allah is the greatest of defenders. Usually by the time of Mila the Nabi the devils have had it so much that they begin to do all sorts of horrific things. But they plan and Allah plans as a result of their crazy actions the whole world will say the name Muhammad and begin to research. And as a result you know, they come towards Islam and they come to the reality of the, the most noblest of creation, the most honoured of creation, the most praised of creation and that leads them to read about that reality and come to, to true understanding. And many world leaders have come to understanding they don't insult the Prophet of Islam and these people have a love for their Prophet but you know the devil does and Allah plans better. And always there is a, a wisdom within Allah's plan and, and the events that are coming. As difficulties come then the believer's duty is to sort of isolate from it, hide from it, make your salawats, make your connections until Allah shows clear signs inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please describe what it means to have relationships with the people for the sake of Allah? If people will inevitably disappoint, why are we wired to need social contact? I think people want validation, they want to, to be validated by the people and the company they keep and the relationship for Allah it has to be truly for Allah means that the, the, the relationships we keep for Allah there's relationships for family that's also for Allah because Allah calls to us, keep the ties of family. Even if it's uncomfortable and, and not the, the most correct understanding we keep quiet, it's a practice, it's a training and to exhibit good characteristics until a line is drawn when things are not correct and proper anymore. And uh, Allah knows, فَأَبِدْ عَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ بَسِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ So that all has its understandings and its limits. And the rest is then the fellowship of the ring, the fellowship of tariqah. That's the most important is to make the connection, make the associations, look and to listen to the teachings and the, that's the most important relationship is the relationship with the teacher and the teachings. And that what locks the heart and to guide the heart and then the other fellowships become so insignificant. Without that strong relationship to the shaykh everybody's looking to be sort of validated. They want to go to a, a mosque and they want the people there to know them and, and they know them and to feel validated, I, I'm a Muslim by, because I'm by virtue of going to this mosque. Where actually it may cause more problems, you go there they talk weird, they talk political on Jummahs, they have the arguments, so they don't, we don't need that validation. What we need and the symbol of validation is the muraqaba. I need to listen to the talks, attend the zikrs even if it's on a broadcast after listen to the zikrs, meditate, make the connection with the shaykh, make this connection with this world of light and alhamdulillah everything puts itself in perspective. And now when I have that strong connection that's my validation, I feel the presence of the shaykh, I feel the love of Sayyidina Muhammad I'm making my guru the sharif, I'm validated. I don't need to now be validated by a local imam. As a matter of fact I don't even understand what he's talking about anymore because he just seems to be on a, on, a, on a bicycle going in the same circle. Maybe for 30 years they'll talk the same talk, never going to any haqqaiqs. They keep talking about the, the sharia of wudu, 
uh, how much water to use and oh same system we know all this we've done this for 35 years 35 years traveling around i don't need to be validated by them i need to make the validation and the connection with the shaykh with the heart of prophet oh then dhikrullah tatma'ina quloob that dhikr brings a tranquility that connection brings a tranquility to the heart right and that's why Allah describes those who made that connection that they don't have fear and grief. Why? Because when they have that connection what are they fearing? Because they go back into their connection there's something wrong, is something you know, no these are just again these people who just don't like, don't worry about it. Because their only worry and their only validation is Allah and His Rasul upset. If not, eh, many have come and gone and tried to bring somebody down and they can't move an inch. So the only concern and the only validation they need is that Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and that's all we need in life. Without that, yeah okay we're, we want to be validated at work, we want to be validated at the mosque, we want to be validated at everywhere we go. So that's the danger. If you make the connection then alhamdulillah that validation is, is of a heavenly nature. Then that love that's when we described in articles of love. Your love for Allah your heart is for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad When that love locks everything else is of a lesser nature and lesser importance. And if that love locks eh, everything flows to the servant. They don't beg for their rizq. They don't have to worry about people's fitna, nothing. Everything comes through that love and through that connection. Without that then everybody is trying to be validated by their boss, by validated by their friends, validated by this, by that. So that, that's a difficult life to, to run after. Allah is offering for us that, leave all those, come to Me, I'm the one who pays you, I'm the one who blesses you, I'm the one who gives to you, alhamdulillah. Love my Rasulullah That's all Allah asking from us inshaAllah. Wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.